my name is Laura Franey. I'm an Associate Professor of English and the Director of the Women's and Gender Studies Program here. Um, and just first of all, on behalf of the Friday Forum, uh, kind of the, the committee that does that, I wanted to welcome you because this is a Friday Forum. The chair of that committee is not here today, so I'm doing the general uh, welcome for him. So thank you for being here on behalf of the Friday Forum, the Public Events uh, Committee. So it's a wonderful crowd. We're so happy to see you here on an afternoon when it's so nice outside. We appreciate your being in here for an hour uh, with us. And I know that you are here to see and hear Duncan and, and not me. Um, but I do want to do a little bit at the beginning with some definitions of terms just to help out. I try to uh, take as many opportunities as I can to, to do a little education with this as well. But first I wanted to say a little bit about the kind of background of this. You probably saw on the flyers or somewhere that this is co-sponsored by the Women's and Gender Studies Program and the Millsaps Feminist Club, which is a new club that got started, was it the end of last year? Or right sometime during last um, school year? And so we've had some uh, wonderful people doing that. So some of the coordinators uh, of that are Brittany Oakland, she's going to talk in just a minute, and Emma Spees. And Stephanie Rolf has been a wonderful uh, faculty coordinator of that and advisor. So first I just wanted to say thank you to them for doing such a great job with some of the feminist activities and organizing this forum. So thank you. Very much. So again, I just wanted to do a little bit of defining of terms in case there were some new terms that might come up when you uh, look at discussions of transgender uh, in the media or something, some of the terms perhaps that, that Duncan will use. So um, I had uh, Kristen Lucas, who is sitting right there, and she is a student worker in Women's and Gender Studies this year, and she's helped a lot with doing things. She actually put together the PowerPoint because I'm kind of technologically <laughs> impaired, so I appreciate her uh, work on that. So I'm just going to go through this quickly, and kind of these are basically <coughs> the definitions from the Oxford English Dictionary, the thing that, you know, literary people use. So there may be different definitions that you have, that's fine. I'm not saying this is the last word on anything, but we'll go through this quickly. Okay, so I have here three terms that start with trans, that sometimes people kind of get mixed up or unclear what those mean. So I want to actually say the one in the middle first, so transvestite. And that simply means a person who wears the clothes of the opposite sex. So it's someone usually who is gender identified, let's say as male, but adopts at certain times women's clothing, okay? But not as a, a full-time lifestyle or a change in their gender or sex, okay? And uh, we have the term at the bottom, transsexual, defined here as a person with the physical characteristics of one sex and psychological characteristics of the other, also one whose sex has been changed by surgery. So, of course, the definition doesn't have to be some kind of actual physical change like surgery, but it can be an identification uh, with the other sex. Under transgender, we have a definition here of a person whose identity does not conform unambiguously to conventional notions of male or female gender, but combines or moves between these. So, transgender. So that word trans is important, right, in between. I've seen this term a lot, and before doing this today, I really didn't know exactly what it meant, cisgender, the one at the top. You may have heard of it, maybe you haven't. But um, it was great to hear the actual definition of what this means when you hear this term used. It means it, it's basically an equivalent of gender normative without having to use the word norm to say this is the norm. So it means identifying with or experiencing a gender the same as one's biological sex or that is affirmed by society. So you might be male gender and male sex, so you're cisgender. Or if you're female and the way you comport yourself fits with how society usually defines what femininity is, then you're cisgender, okay? All right, queer. This is a very kind of complicated term. It's used, you know, it has been used in the past derogatively and in a negative way, but there are many people who have kind of taken it now as a kind of, um, as a term that they want to use that says this is outside the norm and that that's a good thing. It challenges what those binaries are, what those usual definitions of genders or sexes uh, is. So I won't read the whole definition, but I want to read the last sentence here that says, in some academic contexts, it is the per preferred adjective in the study of issues relating to homosexuality. It's also sometimes used of sexual lifestyles who do not conform to conventional heterosexual behavior, such as bisexuality or transgenderism. So thinking about, we talk about things like queer studies, 
uh, a study of queer literature or queer history, and that does mean not only homosexuality, but it can mean other things that are sort of outside the norm, that challenge the usual binaries, whether those be gender, sexual, racial, other, other categories as well. Okay. All right, I'll put up three of these terms that we use a lot, uh, homosexual, bisexual, heterosexual. I wanted to include heterosexual at the bottom because often we just use the terms that seem outside the norm rather than saying, hey, we gotta define the ones that are kind of more typical or something. Uh, so, uh, you know, thinking too that, that you don't want to just limit some kind of, that we want to always make sure that we don't talk about sexuality as exactly the same as gender or something, so I'm trying to make sure that this is just one of those terms that we're talking about and that we don't equate the two necessarily. Okay, this is a little uh, thing from the textbook that I used in the introduction to women's and gender studies. And what, what we study there is the fact that, of course, we, we tend in society to say there's there are people who are XX chromosomally and there are people who are XY. But what, unfortunately, so many people don't know is that there are people who are born XXY. It's one of the ones I have here. Or XYY. And we tend not to be educated about that, to know that there are people who actually don't have those chromosomes. So they're not really fitting in the binary that we use to say, this is a, a gender, you know, this is a sexed female, this is a sexed male. Whereas we actually have people whose chromosomes don't fit into that, that binary. So the term sometimes used for that is intersex. So I've got that on another slide. Um, and I just wanted to mention these, I'm not going to go into detail about them, but these are some other conditions that basically can cause an intersex condition where, you know, biologically you really are not just male or just female. Uh, the, one of the, the more common here actually is Klinefelter syndrome. That was one that was XX, um, XXY. And so there can be, you know, there are various things that can result from those. Uh, some of these happen actually when the fetus is in the womb. For instance, androgen insensitivity syndrome. You can have someone who's XX or XY who gets uh, who, who has this condition, it means that they, their, their body doesn't respond to the androgens that the mother produces. And so they are, like, basically the genitalia don't change even if they're XY, that sort of thing. So some of these are not chromosomal things that result in intersex, but things that happen in the womb. So uh, just always be aware of those things that mean that people don't fit naturally into certain categories. So that may or may not have much to do with today's uh, later discussion, but I thought that it might be helpful. So I think that was the end of what I wanted to say. And um, at the end, I guess if there are questions, I can answer those. But again, um, you know, I want to make sure that we turn things over to Duncan. So I'm going to have Brittany O'Quinn is going to come up and introduce Duncan. And again, I appreciate you all being here. Thanks.